Hello everyone, welcome to the video. So in this video, what I'm going to be showing you how to do is to how to add Linux onto your storage drive so that you can dual boot both Windows and Linux. Now, important thing here is that this is assuming that you just have one single drive. You don't have multiple drives to add Linux to the second drive. This is purely just having one drive. You've got Windows on it. You want to add Linux on there as well so that you can dual boot to Linux as well. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do here is we want to go to disk management. And what we want to do is create a partition so that we have a partition um, that we can install Linux to. Now, the way to do that is over here, you see, I have my one disk. Ignore this disk for the moment. The moment. This is just my USB, which will come in here in a moment, but I already have the USB plugged in. But here's just the disk that I have. This is where my Windows is. You don't want to touch the healthy EFI system partition. You don't want to touch the recovery partition either. Plus those are extremely small. They're each 100 megabytes and 530 megabytes. So what we're looking at right here is this C volume, where it has 930 gigabytes. Now what you want to do is you want to right click that you want to go ahead and do shrink volume, and now it's looking for what space you have so that you can shrink it. Now, for Linux, I believe the size that you need is somewhere around 20 gigabytes or whatnot. However, I want to make sure that I have enough in case I want to store stuff in that area. So what in this section that I'm going to shrink it to to make its own separate uh, partition, I'm going to give it about 150 gigabytes. Now, the way you can figure out how much space you need is this right here is talking in megabytes, right? So it's 1,024 is one gigabyte times I need 150 of them. So I'm going to do 152,600. So that is how much I want to go ahead and create a partition. Go to hit shrink. Now it's going to go ahead and create a partition for you. And as you can see, we have 150.00 gigabytes uh, on allocated. Okay, perfect. That's it. Now the next thing we want to do is that we're going to download an ISO file to a USB eventually. But what we want to do is first make sure that the USB is formatted correctly. So this is my USB. It's an 8 gig USB that I just plugged on in to my computer. I'm going to go ahead and right click that. I'm going to go to hit format. And then I'm going to go ahead and click yes because I'm just formatting a USB here. The important thing here is you can call it whatever you want. You want to make sure this says FAT32. That's important. So FAT32. And then quick format is if you want that checked, hit OK. We continue. It's going to format that real quick, so that is all done. So now our USB drive is ready, our partition is ready on our main disk. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is download the Ubuntu ISO file. So you're going to go ahead and Google Ubuntu, download, and go ahead and click one of these. You want the Ubuntu desktop. Over here is the versions of Ubuntu desktop. LTS is what you want. That's long-term support. This one expires in April 2027. You're going to hit download on there. That downloads in the background. Next thing you want is you want uh, a system that can flash the image to a USB drive. I like to use Etcher. Go ahead and go to bolena.io slash Etcher and hit download for whatever operating system you have, which is probably going to be Windows. Hit download there. Then once both of those have downloaded, you're going to go ahead and open Etcher. In Etcher, you're going to say flash from a file. The flash that you want is in my downloads, and it is this one that I just downloaded. Open, select target. This is it, eight gigabytes. Go ahead and select that one, select one, flash. Now it's gonna start flashing these. We'll see how long that takes. We'll come back once it's done. Okay, so it just finished with the actual initial part of flashing the image, and now it is doing something called validating. So the previous step probably took about 15 minutes. Now the validating should be a little bit quicker. Okay, so this is the validating, it is done. So, we have got our flash completed. So we are done with the etcher now. Okay, so if we go real quick over here into disk management, so you will see that we have, first off, we have our main drive where we created the partition, and then we have got our Ubuntu right here, and that is what we are gonna be using here. So, what do we need to do? This is what we need to do. You need to restart your system at this point, you need to go into the boot section, and you need to boot from this USB drive. Now, I have a Bluetooth keyboard, and the problem with my Bluetooth keyboard is that it disconnects when I power down the machine or when I restart, so then it makes it almost impossible to actually get into the boot menu because I can't hit the button fast enough. So another way to work around that is to go to the start menu, go into the settings menu. You can then go over down here to the bottom to update and security. On the left, hit recovery. 
and then you're going to go ahead and hit Restart Now and Advanced Startup. This has a variety of different options, among them being you can boot into the BIOS, you can boot from different things. So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so we're going to restart now. And when this restarts, it's going to boot into the BIOS. Actually, it's going to boot into this blue section. And for me, I'm going to go into my BIOS. So I'm restarting into the BIOS now. And then right here, I want to boot from my USB drive. So, okay, so originally I had my main disk as the boot, because I originally wanted to boot from that first. But in this case, I want to boot from my USB so that I can install Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out and save, and we're going to restart, and now we're going to boot into, hopefully, the USB drive here. All right, so this is the screen you get. You can try or install Ubuntu, and if you just try it, it just lets you go into the thing without actually having to set it all up. So that is what we want to do. We want to go ahead and try or install, because we're going to be installing. Okay, so here's what you boot into. So you first have the option to try Ubuntu. This is where you can purely just work off of the USB drive and just try it without actually installing anything. I don't want to actually install it, so we're going to go ahead and install Ubuntu. Normal installation. I don't necessarily need this. I can download that stuff later. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and hit continue. So in this screen, we want to go ahead and choose our own using that partition that we created on Windows. So something else. Continue. Now when we look over here, what we're looking for is that free space of 150 gigabytes that I had created. You know, I've actually already started to set this up because I thought the video was recording, but it wasn't. So in this main screen, you're going to look for your free space. Now, a lot of these free spaces are zero megabytes, zero megabytes, one megabyte. That's not it. So the one that you want to find is the one that you created with the partition in Windows. So for me, that was this one because it had quite a big chunk of megabytes. The first thing you want to create when you do this is you want to do the root. Now for root, for Linux, you need about 20 gigabytes just to be safe and whatnot. I do about 25 gigabytes. So this 128,589, I'm going to change it to 25,589. It's not exactly 25 gigabytes, but there's a few extra megabytes. But I'm going to change that to 25,589 or 25,000 or whatever you want megabytes so that I have about 25 gigabytes. Then you want to make sure that this says logical. Beginning of space is good. You want to make sure that it has the EXT4 filing system. For your mounting point, you want to go with this very first one, which is a uh, forward slash. Then you go ahead, and go ahead and hit OK. Perfect. There's that one. Then once you do that, this shows up right here. We've got 24,000. So in this case, I did 24 gigabytes. And then there's that one. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to click on free space again. At this point, your size will have diminished slightly. And now you want to create what's called a swap. So you're going to click logical, beginning of space, use as, you're going to do as swap area. And then for this one, you can have somewhere between like 4,000 and 8,000 for this number, or however much you want. But I, I went with about 8,000. So that's the second one. And then that shows right here under swap. And then for the last section, you want to have the home partition. So again, we're going to go ahead and click on our free space. We have 128,589 megabytes remaining. Again, we want to keep that as logical. Beginning of space is good. And then use as you want the exe4 for your mount point. You want the forward slash home. And then go ahead and hit OK. Now again, if you look at the bottom here, you'll see that the device for the bootloader installation is again that one terabyte that I have that I already have Windows on, but now we're double booting it basically into that extra partition that I had created on Windows. So at this point, you can now go ahead and hit install now and continue. Okay, from here, now it's all pretty straightforward. So you're going to go ahead and hit continue, and then it's going to ask you for some information. And it now begins quite simply installing Linux here. So now we get a message that installation is complete. You'll need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. So we're going to go ahead and click Restart Now. And it says down here, please remove the installation medium, then press Enter. So I'm over here removing the USB stick from my computer, and I press Enter. Okay, so I am rebooting my computer again. Previously, I hit the Delete button to get into the BIOS UEFI. You want to hit F11 in my case, whatever key you need to get to the boot manager. 
And here we are, please select the boot device. So which one do we want? We don't want Windows, we want Ubuntu. So we're gonna go ahead and select that one, hit enter. And now we should be entering into Ubuntu. So you can't see it up here, but we have three options up here. You just want the top one that says Ubuntu. And here we are, we are loading into Ubuntu, or at least we should be. And here we are. And here we are, we are now in Ubuntu. Now let's say I wanna go back to Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart the computer. And when I click restart, that's restarting the actual computer. So it should log in automatically into Windows because I have Windows set or the primary operating system that boots here. Okay, so yeah, here we are in Windows. Let's just verify that this also works. So we pull up the disk manager. I don't know if you guys can see it all that well, but we've got our partition, right? So we've got the, this was the healthy partition that was originally there. Here's the recovery that was originally there. And we have a couple other partitions here. This is the C for Windows. It's got 780 gigabytes left. So this is like all of our Windows stuff. And then here's where Linux is. And um, this is basically where our swap file is. And this is where the root of Linux is. So root of Linux, swap, and then the rest of Linux, all there. So everything's showing up. In my case, it has Windows set as like the primary operating system that it boots into. Now there is a way to change that if you just do a quick Google search, I'm sure it'll show you. But let's say that yours has Linux or let's say yours is like mine and it's like Windows and it loads into Windows every single time. Let's say now you wanna load into Linux. So when you start your computer, or in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna restart it. But when your computer is powering up, all you wanna do is smash that F11, in my case, whatever key you need to get to get to the boot manager, and then you'll be able to select Ubuntu. So that is how you dual boot both Linux and Windows from a single drive. All right, so what we just did was we installed Linux and Windows on the same disk separated by a partition. Now, if we go back into the Windows operating system and we go up here to disk management. Now, I've installed actually a second disk since the previous section of this video, and that disk is displayed right here. I have that right there, it's disk zero. But the disk that we just worked on is this one right here, disk one. So as you can see, this is where I have Windows. This was the healthy EFI system partition that was there previously. Over here we have the recovery partition that was there prior to our install of Linux on this disk. And then right here we have our three sections for Linux. We have the eight gigabytes that we chose, we have the main root, which is the 120, and then we have the 22 for the primary partition for Linux. These three are all our Linux. Now, what if you decide that you don't want to have Linux installed on this disk and you just want to go back to having it the way that it was and just leave that space for Windows? Then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and select each partition and you're going to say delete volume. It gives you a warning message that the selected partition was not created by Windows and might contain some data for other operating systems. Do you want to delete it? Yes. And then it changes to on allocated. We're going to do that to the healthy section as well, because that is also for Linux. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and do that for this main section that we had 120 gigabytes for Linux. Go ahead and delete volume. And as you can see, we have 150 gigabytes of unallocated space, which is exactly how much we had when we originally started. So to go ahead and merge that back into our windows, we're gonna right click the C section of our windows. And real quick, quick note before I do this, is that you can also use this, you can right click this, you can say new simple volume, and then you can create like a drive, for example. So this main section where windows is, is a C drive here that I have here. I can click next and I can choose 
uh, a size and I can choose a letter and create my own volume right there. But for now, I don't really care about that, so I'm going to right click my C volume and I'm going to go ahead and say extend volume. I'm going to hit next and then it's going to examine how much volume I can extend it. All the volume that it can extend it is this entire unallocated space, which I want because I want it back to how it was. I hit next and then finish and now it merges it back into the C. Now we have it exactly how it was prior to doing this whole process to get Linux installed. So the only other thing to do here is after you have deleted those partitions, when you originally restart the computer and go into the boot manager, it's actually still going to show the original Ubuntu, even though it's now all deleted for some reason. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's a bug. So you need to find a way to delete that option because it won't work. None of the files are there. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer again, and I'm going to go into my BIOS settings, or excuse me, my UEFI. So as it restarts, I'm going to hit, for me, it is delete. Now I have an MSI board, so this is going to vary depending on what kind of motherboard you have, but the way for me to do it is I go into settings and then I go into boot, and then down here, UEFI hard disk drive priorities. Here is where you can change what options you have. Now I've already done this, but originally this was all three of them here. Now the only good option here is the second Ubuntu. The other one is no good. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I'm gonna disable that one. And now I just have Windows and Ubuntu. So when I go ahead and exit out of here and then start pressing F11, you're gonna see the boot options I have. 